Hey, sweethearts! Welcome to Chapter 4. Grossberg, who has or had business relationships um, to Mr. Eugner from the Hunting Lodge. And this case was special because it was the only murder in Munich downtown in the center near the Hunting Lodge. Whereas the other murder took place uh, in Munich Uptown. So now we play as Grace. We go to the post to catch our. There's no one there. Let us from Gabriel. Guten Tag. Grüß Gott, Frau Nakimura. Ich habe etwas für Sie. Oh, it's from Gabriel. Ja, das ist vom Schattenjäger. Ja. No, I, I think you... Gabriel is a working partner and... Never mind. Danke. Bitte. Brauchen Sie noch etwas? Do you need something else? No. I think we can leave now. And Danke. Bitte. Read the letter. Gracie, you decided to come over. That's great. Good and tag and all that. I'm sure you and Gertie are hitting it off. Thanks for finding the werewolf book. I'm not sure what it all means, but it might be useful. About Ludwig II, you know, I think you might have something there. Ubergrau says there are two places you should check out. Ludwig had a castle called New Swan something, and there's a museum about him at here in chemistry. Something like that. I really think you should spend some time looking into it. Don't worry. Things are going very smoothly this time around. 
I've tracked a suspect to a hunt club run by a man named Von Glauer. He seems okay, but I'm sure there's something going on with at least one of the others. Don't worry, though. I met a police detective named Lieber, so I have backup. I'll be finished soon. Sit tight and enjoy your visit till I get there. Gabriel. What does he think? I'm on vacation here? No address. Thank you very much, Mr. Knight. Herr Huber? Yes? I was wondering if you've changed your mind about telling me where Gabriel is. It's really important. No. Sorry. Thanks. Bitte. Perhaps this nicely crazy Pennsylvanian couple can help. Hello there, dear. Hi, I'm Grace Nakamura from the castle. Am I interrupting? Heavens no. Have a seat, Miss Nakamura. Well, I might. <laughs> For a moment. Isn't this nice? We just finished our breakfast. Do you want something? No, thanks. Good for you. I can never turn down food myself. <laughs> now you just tell us all about it, sugar pie. You mentioned the other night that you were a demonologist. What is that exactly? Well, it's not as bad as it sounds, honey. What Emma and I really do is to help protect people. Protect them from what? Well, well do you believe in the devil, Miss Nakamura? I believe in good and evil, if that helps. Oh, but Satan and his demons are real, and they will attack the living. And most folks don't know what to do once they've been attacked. We try to help protect people. <laughs> How can you protect people from demons? Best protection is faith in God, of course. But sometimes faith isn't enough. Sometimes we have to delve into the supernatural in order to protect others. Your shot and joggers are just the same. We are? I mean, he is? Of course! The warriors of light are rare these days, but they do exist all around the globe. That's interesting. I just read about a group called Manos del Sol in Brazil. So the Ritters aren't the only Schattenjägers. Well, they're probably the only ones to use that title. But others have been chosen for the battle. Hmm. Do you know anything about King Ludwig II? Sure, we saw his castles, didn't we, Mother? We sure did. Why do you ask? Well, I found a letter in the Schottenegger Library warning Ludwig about the Black Wolf. Who wrote the letter? One of Gabriel's ancestors, a Schottenegger. Hmm. Seems like whoever was using me as a megaphone helped you find that letter. Perhaps you should follow the path something's pointing at. Look into Ludwig. I intend to. The other night you said something about the Black Wolf. What did you mean? Where did you hear that name? I wasn't the one talking. I don't understand. Well, that's quite all right. The point is, it would be a very good idea to answer those questions, and we must work together to do so. Of course I'll help you, Pumpkin. I'd like to know myself, wouldn't I? It isn't every day one's taken over by a disembodied spirit, and I don't much care for it, thank you. You're not talking about a seance, are you? Oh, heavens no. Thank God. Emma's right. I'm much better at tarot cards. I can read for you or for someone else if you prefer. Are you sure you don't know anything about the Black Wolf? I never did, dear. I told you. Really, you mustn't confuse the vessel with the voice. All I remember was seeing a very bright flash like lightning. Next thing I knew, Emil had me outside. Whatever it was, it was very powerful. Very powerful. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do my tarot reading. Don't you worry now. I know what I'm doing.
push your vital energies into the cards. This is your soul card, that which applies to all of your lifetimes. It's the Empress. Oh, that's a good one. What's it mean? It means that your soul's journey is one of leadership. There's great strength here and intelligence. This card represents what you're like in this lifetime. It's the chariot, self-discipline, control. You need to feel you have a plan that you're testing your abilities. The chariot's very masculine. In combination with the Empress, it tells me that you're currently exploring your male side. You will seek out great achievement, but it does have its price. It doesn't sound anything like me. Yes, dear. The third card represents the other. You've pulled the magician. Who is he, dear? Excuse me? Your other, the magician. Oh, this is a very powerful card, Major Arcana. My other? Everyone has an other. Let's see. I bet it's the Schottenjager. What's his name? The Schottenjager? Gabriel Knight. A name of power. He is powerful, this one. The magician is dexterous and cunning, mischievous and manipulate. That's Gabriel, all right. And very strong with magical and occult powers. Now, this is interesting because your card, the chariot, is all logic and reasoning, while his, the magician, is spiritual and intuitive. You two are quite a pair. <laughs> the fourth card shows what you're trying to achieve at this moment your immediate destiny. It's the strength or lust card. Lust? Not that kind of lust, dear. It's a trial card. Finding the strength to continue some difficult journey. It also represents the integration of conflicting energies. That must be your chariot and his magician energies. Mm. Strength also means bonding those energies, loving without judgment, learning to love the beast. Uh-huh. What is this trial, dear? Do you know? Um, uh, well, Gabriel and I are involved with the case right now. It will be a hard time. You must let your love give you power. Use the positive energy of your union or you may not succeed. I think you have the wrong idea. Gabriel and I just work together. Yes, dear. But if I might just suggest, when you're facing negative forces, the positive energy of love is a very vital weapon. You make yourself vulnerable when you resist your own tools. Well, that's been helpful. I hope so, dear. Maybe we should do a reading for Gabriel. Oh, let's! It's a little like spying on someone unawares, but what the heck? <sighs> Reach out to the cards and to think about his essence. His soul card is the magician. Yes, dear. It reflects your other exactly. <laughs> well, maybe, but I'd rather hold out for David Copperfield. And his lifetime card? Oh, goodness. The lovers. <laughs> you mean the sole purpose of his life is in his pants? Doesn't surprise me. It's not what you think, dear. It's a duality card. As a lifetime card, it refers to Gabriel's own duality. Good versus evil, physical pleasure versus spiritual growth, that kind of thing. His challenge is to integrate the conflicting parts of himself. Until he does, he'll never find peace. And you will find peace when you acknowledge all of him. Find a way to love the worst as you already love the best. You're really reaching. Mother. His other is the High Priestess. Let me guess, that's me, right? 
No, dear, it's not. The High Priestess represents psychic mysteries, deep wisdom. This is a very different energy from your earthy one. This must be our connection. To the voice, dear! Someone is trying to communicate with Gabriel. This force is represented by the High Priestess. That's not much help. What about the Black Wolf? But it is a help, dear. The High Priestess is a spiritual guide card if ever there was one. The message must have been a warning. If this force is connected to Gabriel, and if he's so very psychic, then why doesn't it just go to him? Why say it to me? Maybe Gabriel's blocked. Maybe he's purposefully blocking. There is that duality business. Let's go on and see if it becomes clear. The fourth card, remember, represents the current situation. It's... Death. Oh. Nothing to worry about, then. Now you just leave interpretation up to me, sugar pie. It's a transformation card. Dying to one thing and being born to another. It is painful, but it isn't necessarily bad. Two of wands. Oh, my. What? A two is not good here. Wands is Mars in Aries. That's a war card in conjunction with the death card. There are two possible transformations. Two transformations? Yes, dear. Gabriel is waging a spiritual battle. The transformation might be good or evil. That must be the purpose of the High Priestess. She's trying to guide him. So you think... He really might be in danger? Oh, yes, dear. Gabriel's very essence is at stake. If he takes the wrong path with his powers, Emil and I will stay in town. You must let me know if anything else happens that we can read for clues. Let the Force use you. I'd better go. Anytime you need us, stop by. And be careful now. Thanks. I don't have anything to say to Herr Huber at the moment. King Ludwig II of Bavaria. Guess they're closed. Gerda's here. I wonder what she's up to. was in love with Wolfgang.
Let's see if we can comfort Gerde. I call. They're beautiful, but they won't last long in my coat. It wasn't worth picking up the first time. I wish I could read these biographies of Ludwig. Wait a minute. Ludwig II, fairy tale king of Bavaria. I didn't see this before. Yep, English. Ludwig remained throughout his life both very bright and very naive. He was an introvert who seemed to be constantly out of sync with traditional views of rulership, money, and human relationships. The world ever failed to match his ideals. Perhaps this was a fault of his sheltered upbringing as future king. He never was introduced to the real world, and the real world failed to interest him as an adult. In his youth, Ludwig was in fine physical condition and loved to hike alone in the Alps and ride horses. He had a hunting lodge, Shahen, specifically for this purpose. Unfortunately, in 1872, a rather traumatic hunting accident befell the king at Shahen, and his leg was cruelly damaged. He never fully recovered from this incident, and his hiking and riding ceased. His physical health deteriorated from that time on and explains why he looked so unhealthy in later years. A hunting... Other than his long-standing friendship with the Empress Elizabeth of Austria and with his mother, the relationships Ludwig attempted with others were nearly always a disappointment for him and a bewilderment for his partners. He would become obsessed with someone, a singer, an artist a nobleman or a peasant, and would bombard them with gifts, praise, and favors. When they would fail to return the depths of rapturous passion he required, the singular adoration and humble obedience he expected, he would grow disappointed and cut himself off from them. The objects of his interest were occasionally women, usually ones he fell in love with after seeing them in idealized roles on the stage, but they were more often young men who fit his fantasies of the heroic sagas like Lohengrin and Parsifal that he so loved. A good example of the king's obsessive behavior in relationships is the following letter from the Königlich Bayerische Archives, which this author was privileged to access. It is dated 1864, and it was written by Ludwig's manservant, Paul, to a friend. The king has been in high mood these days. The reason, of course, is a new interest. Thursday last, the king attended a performance of Lohengrin in the Wittelsbacher Theater. He came back in a fever, demanding that a man be found. The man, it was gathered, had been sitting in a box across from Ludwig and had drawn the king's attention by his beauty and his deep emotional response to the performance. The king declared that here at last is a sensitive soul. The man was tracked down and brought in for an audience. Upon my word, never have I seen any mind so in line with his majesty's own. They discussed Wagner and France and Byron and all manner of things until long past dawn. The young man, beautiful indeed to look upon, met the king's enthusiasm and knowledge bit for bit.
His Majesty has been in the thick of it ever since, and while I welcome his good temper, I grow tired of fetching letters back and forth to Louis, so called by His Majesty, that should tell you who the young man looks like, at all hours of the night. This author has not been able to learn much about Louis, but he was known to have been a seemingly hybrid foreigner, and he was involved with Ludwig as late as 1880, when he fell into disfavor. The king, especially later in life, felt a great deal of guilt about his sensual nature. His diaries are full of repentant entries begging God for forgiveness and swearing to remain pure. In many of the diary entries, he swears to abstain from sexual relations. The number of these oath entries indicate that Ludwig was not very successful in resisting temptation, yet it is also clear that Ludwig was a God-fearing man and that, though his flesh might occasionally fall, he never surrendered his heart and his conscience to sin. Ludwig remained throughout his life both very bright and very naive. He was an introvert who seemed to be constantly out of sync with traditional views of rulership, money, and human relationships. The world ever failed to match his ideals. Perhaps this was a fault of his sheltered upbringing as future king. He never was introduced to the real world, and the real world failed to interest him as an adult. In his youth, Ludwig was in fine physical condition and loved to hike alone in the Alps and ride horses. He had a hunting lodge, Shahen, specifically for this purpose. Unfortunately, in 1872, a rather traumatic hunting accident befell the king at Shahen, and his leg was cruelly damaged. He never fully recovered from this incident, and his hiking and riding ceased. His physical health deteriorated from that time on and explains why he looked so unhealthy in later years. A hunting accident? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I'd want to call the biography's publisher. better, don't you think? I'm so sorry. I was an idiot. Gabriel and I, we... we never... I know. It's my fault. It's Gabriel's fault. He never tells me anything. I don't know why he didn't want me on this case. Maybe he just... Don't even try to make excuses for him. Still, he's up to his neck in it, I think. Will you help me out with something? Of course. I have to do some research on Ludwig. I want to go see some of his castles. Take Gabriel's car. There's a map of southern Bavaria in the car. Ludwig's castles are all marked. Thanks. Good luck.
I wonder what kind of flowers these are. And so we can start our sightseeing tour through Bavaria. <laughs> 